Did you know the average inflation rate in the U.S. hovers around 2.5%? It means that every year the buying power of your hard-earned cash silently evaporates. But what if I told you there's something used by investing gurus that can turbocharge your wealth at warp speed? It's called compounding, and it's Einstein's eighth wonder of the world for a reason. Einstein is reputed to have said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world or something like that. And Now you might be thinking, yeah, that sounds great, but how do I actually do it? In this video, we'll discuss four powerful ways suggested by Warren Buffett to compound your portfolio so you can maximize your returns and build wealth. So let's jump right into it. Warren Buffett is often referred to as the Oracle of Omaha. He is renowned for his disciplined investment approach that includes principles of value investing and a focus on long-term wealth creation. While he doesn't explicitly use the term compounding portfolio, his investment strategy involves compounding over time. Let's delve into the key elements of Warren Buffett's approach to building a compounding portfolio. Warren Buffett's investment philosophy is deeply rooted in the principles of value investing, which involves identifying undervalued assets and holding them for the long term. His approach is often summarized by the following principles. Business acumen. Buffett emphasizes understanding the business in which you invest. He looks for companies with durable competitive advantages, often referred to as economic moats, which enable them to maintain profitability over the long term. Intrinsic value. Buffett calculates the intrinsic value of a company, considering factors such as future earnings, growth rates, and risk. He seeks to invest in companies trading below their intrinsic value. Long-term horizon. Buffett is known for his patient approach to investing. He prefers holding on to quality investments for an extended period, allowing the power of compounding to work its magic. Now, let's discuss Warren Buffett's ways to compound your portfolio. Number 1. Quality over Quantity Warren Buffett's strategy emphasizes quality over quantity when it comes to stock selection. He seeks companies with enduring competitive advantages, often found in businesses with strong brand recognition, cost advantages, or network effects. Coca-Cola has been a staple in Buffett's portfolio for decades. The brand is globally recognized, and the company has a significant market share in the beverage industry. The enduring popularity of Coca-Cola's products contributes to the compounding effect over time. One of the cornerstones of Buffett's approach is his commitment to holding onto investments for the long term. This aligns with the compounding principle where returns are reinvested to generate additional returns. Buffett's investment vehicle, Berkshire Hathaway, exemplifies the long-term holding strategy. He has held many of Berkshire's core investments like Coca-Cola and American Express for decades allowing the compounding effect to significantly enhance shareholder value. Buffett focuses on companies that consistently generate earnings and, when applicable, pay dividends. These earnings and dividends are often reinvested in the same businesses or deployed into new opportunities, amplifying the compounding effect. Buffett acquired C's Candies in 1972. Over the years, the company has generated significant earnings. Instead of taking these earnings out of the business, Buffett has consistently reinvested them, contributing to the growth of Berkshire Hathaway's overall value. Buffett coined the term economic moats to describe a company's sustainable competitive advantages. Businesses with economic moats are more likely to withstand competition and generate consistent profits, supporting the compounding of shareholder wealth. Moody is a major player in the credit ratings which possess an economic moat. The high barriers to entry in the credit rating industry create a competitive advantage for Moody's. Buffett's investment in Moody's aligns with his preference for businesses with enduring competitive strengths. Examining the historical performance of Berkshire Hathaway provides insights into the success of Buffett's compounding strategy. According to Berkshire Hathaway's annual reports, the company's per share market value increased from $19.46 in 1965 to $556,463 in 2020, reflecting a compounded annual growth rate of approximately 20%. Comparing Berkshire Hathaway's performance with broader market indices such as the S&P 500 further highlights the effectiveness of Buffett's compounding strategy. Uh, the the S&P 500 index is the one to use. That's the one I used in that bet I made for 10 years. It's the one I've told 
uh, the trustee for my wife uh, to put 90% of the funds I leave her into. Uh, uh, the S&P 500 is, I don't know whether it's 80% of the market value of, you know, of everything you can buy in. Over multiple decades, Berkshire has consistently outperformed the market, showing the long-term success of his approach. Various academic studies and research papers have analyzed the performance of Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett's investment strategy. For instance, a study by economists Andrea Frizzini, David Kabiller, and Lassie Peterson found that Berkshire Hathaway's excess return relative to the market can be partly attributed to investing in high-quality stocks and exhibiting a low beta or lower volatility strategy. Buffett's success has made him a revered figure in the investment community. Numerous surveys and reports highlight the influence of Buffett's principles on other successful investors. Many institutional and retail investors incorporate elements of his strategy into their own investment approaches. Berkshire Hathaway's annual shareholder meetings draw significant attention, with investors and analysts seeking insights into Buffett's latest thinking. The widespread attendance and media coverage indicate the enduring appeal of his investment philosophy. The adoption of value investing principles by institutional investors and financial institutions further supports the effectiveness of Buffett's approach. Many institutional investors incorporate elements of value investing and long-term holding strategies inspired by Buffett. Number 2. Dividend Growth Investing Another effective way to compound a portfolio involves leveraging the power of dividend growth investing. This strategy focuses on investing in companies that not only pay dividends, but also consistently increase their dividend payouts over time. This strategy combines the benefits of income generation and capital appreciation, providing investors with a reliable stream of cash flow and the potential for long-term wealth accumulation. The key to successful dividend growth investing lies in building a diversified portfolio of stocks from sectors known for stable cash flows and the ability to grow dividends. Sectors such as consumer goods, utilities, and healthcare often house companies with a history of reliable dividend payments. Procter & Gamble is a classic example of a company with a consistent dividend growth history. P&G has increased its dividend for over six decades, showcasing its commitment to rewarding shareholders over the long term. The compounding power of dividend growth investing becomes evident when investors choose to reinvest the dividends received back into the same dividend-paying stocks. This practice, often facilitated through dividend reinvestment plans, allows investors to acquire additional shares, effectively increasing the income-generating capacity of their portfolio. Consider an investor holding shares of a dividend growth stock like Johnson & Johnson. Instead of taking the cash dividends, the investor opts for automatic dividend reinvestment through a drip. Over time, the increasing number of shares due to reinvested dividends contributes to the compounding effect. The sustainability of dividend growth is a crucial factor in this strategy. Investors should analyze a company's financial health, cash flow stability, and commitment to returning value to shareholders. Companies with lower payout ratios and consistent earnings growth are often preferred. Microsoft is an example of a technology company that has transformed into a dividend growth stock. With a focus on diversifying its business and maintaining strong cash flows, Microsoft has consistently increased its dividend, appealing to income-focused investors seeking growth. Analyzing the historical performance of a well-constructed portfolio of dividend growth stocks demonstrates the potential for wealth accumulation. Numerous studies, including those by investment research firms, have shown that dividend growth stocks, as a category, have outperformed non-dividend-paying stocks and even some high-yield dividend stocks over extended periods. Dividend Aristocrats, a group of S&P 500 companies with a history of consistently increasing dividends for at least 25 years, serve as a benchmark for dividend growth investing. Comparing the total returns of a dividend aristocrat's portfolio with the broader market emphasizes the potential for long-term outperformance. Investors can gain exposure to dividend aristocrats through exchange-traded funds like the S&P Dividend Aristocrats ETF. Historical performance data of such ETFs showcases the compounding effect of dividends and capital appreciation. Research studies by financial institutions and academics have explored the effectiveness of dividend growth investing. For instance, a study published in the Financial Analyst Journal found that companies with consistent and growing dividends tend to exhibit superior performance over time. 
Surveys and market observations often highlight the preference for dividend growth investing among income-focused investors, particularly those in or approaching retirement. The desire for a reliable income stream that grows over time aligns with the principles of this strategy. Surveys conducted among retirees often reveal a preference for dividend-paying stocks, emphasizing the role of dividends in providing consistent income during retirement years. Institutional investors, including pension funds and endowments, often allocate portions of their portfolios to dividend growth strategies. This institutional adoption is a testament to the broader recognition of the stability and compounding potential inherent in well-selected dividend growth stocks. Number 3. Dollar Cost Averaging Another effective approach to compound a portfolio involves systematic and disciplined contributions through dollar cost averaging. This strategy involves consistently investing a fixed amount of money at regular intervals, regardless of the market's fluctuating prices. This disciplined approach ensures that investors buy more shares when prices are low and fewer shares when prices are high. Over time, this strategy aims to reduce the impact of market volatility and take advantage of the compounding effect. The essence of dollar cost averaging lies in making regular contributions to your investment portfolio, whether it's weekly, monthly, or quarterly. By consistently investing, you automatically buy more shares when prices are lower and fewer shares when prices are higher, smoothing out the overall cost basis. Consider an investor who allocates $500 each month to an index fund. In a month where the market is down, the $500 buys more shares, and in a month where the market is up, it buys fewer shares. Over time, this consistent approach aims to provide a favorable average cost per share. Dollar cost averaging addresses the challenge of trying to time the market, which can be unpredictable and subject to short-term fluctuations. By spreading investments over time, investors avoid the pressure of making precise market timing decisions. During periods of heightened volatility, such as the market fluctuations seen in 2020, Investors employing dollar cost averaging were less exposed to the risks associated with making lump sum investments at potentially unfavorable times. The compounding effect in dollar cost averaging is twofold. First, each contribution has the potential to grow over time as the underlying investments appreciate. Second, the reinvestment of dividends or interest earned on the portfolio further contributes to the compounding effect. Consider an investor who receives dividends from their portfolio. Through dollar cost averaging, these dividends are automatically reinvested, leading to the acquisition of additional shares. Over time, the compounding effect is amplified as both the initial contributions and reinvested dividends generate returns. Analyzing the historical performance of dollar cost averaging, especially during volatile market conditions, highlights its potential benefits. Studies and market analyses often showcase scenarios where investors who consistently contributed over time fared well compared to those making lump sum investments. Comparing the returns of dollar cost averaging with lump sum investing in various market environments illustrates the risk mitigation aspect of this strategy. While lump sum investing can be more susceptible to market timing, dollar cost averaging provides a disciplined and less volatile approach. Investors who employed dollar cost averaging during the 2008 financial crisis were less exposed to the immediate impact of the market downturn compared to those who made large investments just before the crisis. Research studies in finance have explored the efficacy of dollar cost averaging. Some studies suggest that over certain time horizons, dollar cost averaging can result in a lower average cost per share compared to lump sum investing. Dollar cost averaging is often popular among retail investors, especially those with a long-term investment horizon and a risk-averse mindset. Surveys indicate that this strategy is widely used by individuals seeking a systematic and less emotionally driven approach to investing. Surveys conducted by financial institutions often reveal that retail investors appreciate the simplicity and discipline of dollar cost averaging making it a preferred method for those looking to build wealth gradually. Many financial advisors recommend dollar cost averaging as a prudent strategy for investors, particularly those new to the market. The strategy aligns with the principles of disciplined and diversified investing, earning it recognition from financial professionals. Number 4. Strategic Asset Allocation and Rebalancing 
Another effective method to compound a portfolio involves strategic asset allocation and periodic rebalancing. This approach focuses on maintaining a diversified mix of asset classes aligned with your investment goals and risk tolerance. Strategic asset allocation involves determining the optimal mix of asset classes in your portfolio based on your financial goals, time horizon, and risk tolerance. Common asset classes include stocks, bonds, and cash or cash equivalents. This strategy provides a framework for diversification, which is a key element in managing risk and enhancing the potential for compounding. Before implementing strategic asset allocation, investors need to clearly define their investment goals and assess their risk tolerance. Goals may include wealth accumulation for retirement, education funding, or other financial objectives. Understanding risk tolerance helps determine the appropriate balance between potentially higher returning but riskier assets, for instance, stocks and lower risk assets, example, bonds. An investor planning for retirement might have a long time horizon and a higher risk tolerance. In this case, a strategic asset allocation might lean towards a higher allocation to equities for potential long-term growth. Diversification is a fundamental principle of strategic asset allocation. By spreading investments across different asset classes, investors aim to reduce the impact of poor performance in any single class. This diversification helps in mitigating risk while allowing for the compounding of returns over time. A balanced portfolio might include a mix of equities, bonds, and possibly other assets. During periods of economic expansion, the equities component may contribute to growth, while the bond component provides stability during market downturns. Over time, market movements can lead to shifts in the original asset allocation. Periodic rebalancing involves adjusting the portfolio back to its target allocation. This disciplined approach ensures that investors are consistently buying low and selling high within their chosen asset classes. Consider an investor with a target allocation of 60% stocks and 40% bonds. If the stock market experiences significant gains, the equity portion of the portfolio may grow to 70%. Rebalancing would involve selling some stocks and buying bonds to restore the 60-40 allocation. Analyzing the historical performance of diversified portfolios with strategic asset allocation provides insights into the potential for compounding wealth. Research often highlights the benefits of maintaining a well-balanced and diversified portfolio over the long term. Comparing the returns of portfolios with strategic asset allocation against those with an unbalanced or undiversified approach underscores the importance of diversification in achieving consistent and compounded returns. During the 2008 financial crisis, investors with balanced portfolios that included both stocks and bonds experienced more stable returns compared to those heavily invested in a single asset class. Academic studies on asset allocation strategies consistently emphasize the role of strategic asset allocation in achieving financial goals. Research often explores optimal allocation models based on different risk profiles and economic conditions. Financial advisors often recommend strategic asset allocation as a fundamental strategy for investors. The approach is recognized for its ability to manage risk, provide a systematic framework for investing, and contribute to the compounding of returns over time. Financial institutions offer model portfolios that align with different risk profiles, showcasing the widespread recognition of the importance of strategic asset allocation in achieving long-term financial objectives. Institutional investors, including pension funds and endowments, commonly adopt strategic asset allocation strategies. The approach is acknowledged for its ability to balance risk and return, making it suitable for long-term wealth compounding. So, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.